Hi, kids. Today we will learn about parts of speech. So let's start. Kids, everything we say, whether it's a statement, a command, an interrogative sentence, or an exclamatory sentence, has some words in it. Word is the smallest unit of English language that has a distinct meaning. And each word of English language can be categorized into one of the following categories, known as the parts of speech. Every word can either be a noun, a pronoun, a verb, an adverb, an adjective, a conjunction, a preposition, or an interjection. Now, Let's learn about all of them one by one. Noun. This part of speech refers to the words that are used to name persons, animals, birds, places, things, even ideas and feelings. Here are some examples. Tom is going to school. Here, Tom is the name of a person, and school is the name of an institution. So these are nouns. This is my chair. Here, chair is a noun, as it's the name of an object. It is my birthday. The word birthday is a noun, as it refers to an event. Nouns can be of different types. Proper nouns. Proper nouns always start with a capital letter and refer to specific names of persons, places, or things. Like Ebony Garden, Earth, Mercury, Sunday, Monday, Pizza Hut, etc. Common nouns. Common nouns are the generic names of persons, things, or places, like car, pizza, eraser, house, office, or movie. They refer to general things and not particular things. Next is concrete nouns. The kind of nouns that refer to Material objects are known as concrete nouns, like pen, pencil, sheet, pillow, pencil, building, chair, etc. Concrete nouns are nouns that you can touch or physically experience. Another type of categorization of nouns is abstract nouns. Abstract nouns are those nouns that you cannot touch or physically observe. Like happiness, sadness, excitement. These are the names of feelings and not material objects. You can neither touch nor physically observe these nouns. One more type of noun is collective noun. Collective noun refer to group of persons, animals, or things. For example, a crew of sailors, a party of friends, a group of islands, a bunch of flowers, a bouquet of flowers, a cluster of stars, a pair of socks, a pack of cards, a school of whales, a group of friends. So, a collection of same kinds of things is referred to by collective nouns, whether it is a collection of things, persons, or animals. Now, we are going to learn about another part of speech called pronoun. A pronoun is a part of speech used in the place of nouns. I, it, he, she, his. Her, we, they, their, ours. 
Ben is a very sincere child. He is always smiling and is always helpful to others. Here, he refers to Ben. So, he is a word that is used in the place of a noun. So, it's a pronoun. I want to read this book. Here, I is a pronoun, as it is used in the place of name of a person. Are you enjoying this game? Here, you is a pronoun, as it is used in the place of a person. They are playing with a ball. Here, they is used in the place of names of all the persons who are playing with the ball. So, they is a pronoun. We are going to school. Here, we is used in the place of names of all the persons who are going to school. So, we is a pronoun. Let's learn about the next part of speech, an adjective. Adjectives are the words that describe nouns or pronouns. He is a cute boy. Here, cute describes the naming word or noun boy. She is a pretty girl. Here, pretty describes the girl, which is a noun. This is a beautiful room. Here, beautiful describes the room. So, beautiful is an adjective. He has three dogs. Here, the word three is an adjective, which describes how many dogs are there. That mountain is huge. Here, the word huge describes the noun mountain, which is a noun. It's time to learn about the next part of speech, that is, a verb. A verb is that part of the sentence without which no sentence can possibly exist. A verb shows what's being done in a sentence physically or mentally. I am going to the park. Here, going is the action word or the verb. He is writing in his notebook. Here, writing is the verb of this sentence. I like this pen as it helps me write smoothly. Here, the word like tells about an action being done mentally. So, it's a verb. Now, let's learn about the next part of speech called adverbs. Adverbs are the words that describe adjectives, verbs, or other adverbs. She sings beautifully. Sings is a verb here, and the word beautifully tells how she sings. So beautifully is an adverb, as adverbs describe adjectives, verbs, or other adverbs. Olivia writes neatly. Here, the word write is a verb or an action word. And the word neatly describes the verb write, so it's an adverb. Sam runs very fast. Here, the verb is run. And the word very fast tells how Sam runs. So, very fast is an adverb here. Ruth, along with her family, came to my house yesterday. Here, the word came is a verb or an action word. And the word yesterday describes the word came. And the word that further describes the verb is known as an adverb. So, the word yesterday is an adverb. The next part of speech is preposition. A preposition mostly specifies 
the location or the position of an object with respect to another object. Examples of preposition are above, below, throughout, outside, before, near, since. For example, the lamp is hanging above the table. A rat is sitting between two cats. A cat is sitting among many dogs. The papers are scattered throughout the room. Do not go outside. Come inside the room. Some boxes are lying near the door. The box is lying behind the curtain. Next part of speech is conjunction. The words that join the part of sentences are known as conjunction. And, yet, but, for, nor, or are the examples of conjunction. She is a dancer and a model. Here, and, is joining the two parts of the sentence. She is tall and graceful. Here, and, is joining the two parts of the sentence. She likes to dance as well as singing. As well as is joining the two parts of the sentence. She was sick, but she studied hard. Here, but, is joining the two parts of the sentence. She didn't come because she was busy somewhere else. Here, because, is joining the two parts of the sentence. So, conjunctions are the words that join the two parts of a sentence and also coordinate the words in a sentence or make the sentence more meaningful. Now let's learn about the next part of a sentence, that is, interjection. Interjections express strong emotion and are followed by an exclamation sign. Ouch! That must have hurt! Hooray! We won! Wow! That's a brilliant idea! So words such as ouch, oh, wow, oops are known as interjections. They express sudden emotions. So kids, today we have touched upon the topic of various parts of speech. We will learn more about them in detail in our next section. Now you can go ahead and take a quiz to learn more. Bye-bye!